Hey guys, Dusty here. Today I want to do a quick comparison between Saucony's top carbon plated race day shoes, the Endorphin Pro 3 and the Endorphin Elite. So first of all, I have quite a bit of experience running in both of these shoes. In the Endorphin Pro 3, I have almost 250 miles. And then in the Endorphin Elite, I have just over 100 miles. Uh, and with that being said, let's get into my comparison. So on paper, these shoes look very similar. Uh, they have the exact same stack height, 39.5 in the rear, 31.5 in the forefoot for a heel to toe drop of eight millimeters. They weigh almost the exact same. The Endorphin Pro 3 comes in a little bit heavier in my size at 7.1 ounces, and the Endorphin Elite comes in at 7.0 ounces. And honestly, that's probably where the similarities end. Once you put both of these shoes on your feet, it's pretty evident that they are very different feeling shoes. So fairly different uppers on both of these shoes. I didn't experience any real issues. Both shoes in my case fit true to size. I will say I can probably get a better lockdown in the Endorphin Pro 3 than the Endorphin Elite. The Endorphin Elite has a lot going on in this upper, uh, lots of weird little cutaways and a very unusual heel which I wasn't sure about after my first run but that odd feeling kind of went away the more I ran in the shoe. Overall the Endorphin Elite has an okay lockdown, uh, Endorphin Pro 3 has a good lockdown. Now we start getting into some of the major differences between the shoes and we'll talk about midsole and ride of both of the shoes. So the Endorphin Pro 3 is using Saucony's Power Run PB midsole and then the Endorphin Elite is using Saucony's Power Run HG midsole. And the feeling of the midsole in the Endorphin Elite is quite a bit firmer than that of the Endorphin Pro 3. So if you're someone who likes uh, more of a softer plush ride, uh, the Endorphin Pro 3 might be more of what you're into. Now the ride of both of the shoes, we might as well start with the Endorphin Pro 3. Um, I love the ride of the shoe. It's soft, it handles a huge range of paces. Honestly, out of all the carbon plate at race day shoes that I have, I could probably use the Endorphin Pro 3 as my daily trainer. That's how much I like it. So it feels great at easy paces, like doing your warm up and cool down before a, a big, harder, faster session. The Pro 3 feels slightly less stable than the Endorphin Elite. That's because the foam feels quite a bit softer. Also, I believe the base of the Pro 3 might be slightly narrower than that of the Elite. But overall, when you compare the Pro 3 to other carbon plated shoes out on the market, like the new Cloud Boom Echo 3 or the Nike Vaporfly, it feels quite a bit more stable than those options. Now the ride of the Endorphin Elite is very different. I certainly don't prefer it as much as the Pro 3. Uh, so first of all, the Endorphin Elite has a much firmer ride. It really doesn't feel good at slower or easier paces. To be honest, this shoe for myself kind of feels like it's big and bulky even though it's essentially on paper the same as the Pro 3. The Elite also has more of a rocker geometry to it. I'll try to put some footage up of these shoes next to each other and it's very easy to see how much more aggressive the Elite is in its geometry. Now the one thing I will mention about the Elite is it does feel quite nice at marathon pace. I would say probably 80% of the running I've done in this shoe most of it was prepping myself for a marathon that didn't end up happening but uh, i did a lot of key sessions at marathon pace in this shoe and the endorphin elite for me was kind of like sneaky fast at uh, that type of pace marathon pace i feel like i just locked in that pace and it was kind of easy to hold it whereas i feel like maybe i have to work a little bit harder in the endorphin pro 3 to hold that pace but for myself at least i think marathon pace is where the shoe shines and that's probably about it. Uh, for half marathon I still think I would probably use the Endorphin Pro 3. I'm not sure why, I just feel like this is big and clunky. Yes, maybe it's fine cruising through a marathon in this, but for something like a half marathon or an event where you're running faster, I just don't want to be in a shoe that feels big and clunky. So for race day specifically, between the two shoes, I think for a marathon, I would give the edge to the Endorphin Elite. And then for everything else, I would give it to the Endorphin Pro 3. Uh, and I will say I would have no issues running a marathon in the Endorphin Pro 3 if I had to. And honestly, I think a lot of you would prefer running a, a marathon in the Endorphin Pro 3 just because it has that softer midsole feel to it. Now another huge difference between the two shoes is the outsole. So the Endorphin Pro 3 
like I said, I have almost 250 miles on it, and it's holding up fantastic. Uh, the shoe still feels great. The midsole still has, in my opinion, a lot of life in it. And this outsole has held up better than a lot of my daily trainer outsoles. It grips really well. I just have a little bit of wear on the heel. Overall, I would say best outsole in the game when it comes to a carbon plated race day shoe. And then the Endorphin Elite outsole, uh, you're going to have very low durability with this. Um, I definitely don't think I'm going to be able to get even another 60 miles out of this shoe before I'll likely retire them. It's a very thin rubber, doesn't grip anywhere near as good as the Pro 3. And I just noticed this, but the rubber on the heel is already starting to uh, peel back a little bit. So overall, in terms of durability, huge win for the Endorphin Pro 3. Now another huge difference between the two shoes is price. Now the Endorphin Pro 3 retails for 225 US or 275 Canadian. And then the Endorphin Elite has a pretty big price jump. It's going to cost you 300 US or 350 Canadian. So for me, my recommendation to probably 90% of you would be go Endorphin Pro 3. It's going to be a shoe that you can train in quite a bit. Uh, it has a very long life. It's like we just talked about. It's very durable, feels good at all paces, and it's coming in quite a bit less expensive than the Endorphin Elite. And then maybe for that 10% of you who are looking to squeeze every single second out of a marathon, you don't mind a firmer ride, you don't mind spending 300 bucks to get a shoe that's going to last you maybe 150 miles, then yeah, try the Endorphin Elite. This isn't going to be a shoe that you're going to want to train in. You're going to want to leave this one just for race day and those key training sessions. So anyways, I hope that sheds some light on the two shoes. I like them both. I like the Pro 3 a little bit more. And honestly, I don't have enough good things to say about this shoe. I think in terms of value, it's probably the best carbon plated race day shoe that you can find. Yes, there are a couple of shoes, I think are probably a little bit faster than, than the Endorphin Pro 3, but a shoe that is still less expensive than some others on the market, is very durable, and is super versatile at all paces. Um, I think Stockney really knocked it out of the park with the Pro 3. And like always, if you have any questions about this comparison, leave your question down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.